Sister Barbara Ann Boss. She's a member of the Sisters of Charity. And that explains a lot of her. Um, she comes from a very large family. She's a native of Allegheny County, correct? Um, I, I feel a connection with her. I don't want to embarrass her, but she, uh, she's amazing to me. Um, I've been a guest uh, teacher, lecturer, I should say, at Seton Hill University for the past three years in their entrepreneurial study department. It's named after a gentleman who has been a great um, friend of the university, a member of the board of trustees at Seton Hill, Mr. Wookage. He's in the healthcare business. And he, he um, underwrote the Entrepreneurial Institute at the university. And I've, as I said, I've been a guest lecturer. And we talk about what does it mean to be an entrepreneur? What do you have to do? What do you have to think about? And in our, there's an interview in our Celebration magazine where the gentleman that I interviewed talked about what it takes to be an entrepreneur. But what I've learned from Sister Barbara Ann Boss is you can't read it in a book. You have to do it. And you have to start somewhere. She said that to me. Um, she is one of the most marvelous entrepreneurs I've ever met. She's the president and CEO of the Seton Center in Allegheny County. And a member of her board, Tony Pellegrini, is here with us today, a fellow colleague in the law. Um, together with the board, Sister Catherine is chair of the Seton Center board. They are doing something utterly remarkable in health care. It really is faith in action. It's life in progress. Sister Barbara runs a facility, which is the old Elizabeth Seton High School, and the sisters still own that property, in which she does both adult daycare and child care, all in the same facility. It's, it's, it's unique. And she does it on, with a limited staff, with a facility that she's, it's a beautiful facility, but I think she might say she's taping it together on any given day to make it do what she, what she needs it to do. And she, there's a lot of demand. She's in Brookline, she's right in the South Hills. And when I um, first started out in my career, I was single, and then John and I married, and immediately, a year later, we had John James, a um, little bit. Uh, one of your biggest concerns as a working mother is if you don't have family around to help you on any given day, you, you've got to find good health care for, for your child. And um, so I went to the Seton Center when I started this job and immediately was taken into the nursery where they were six weeks old. I had my, uh, we had our, I had my, uh, 20 to 21 year old daughter with me. And she said, Mom, I want to work here. I mean, the care that they give those children is remarkable. And that's a legacy of, of Elizabeth Seton, it's a legacy of the Sisters of Charity. Uh, so she's here today because I feel she, she is the leader, premier leader in advanced wellness and health care in our region today. I, I put it up there as the Seton Center, and she's here to tell you a little bit about that today. Thank you. Thank you, Julie. Um, two things before I start. Number one, I cannot take credit for this PowerPoint. I had to call in a parent and say, how do I do this? When Julia said, you have to give this presentation and I want a PowerPoint with lots of pictures. I thought, I don't have the faintest idea. I have the faintest idea how to do this. So I called in a parent and she said, oh, no problem. Is it on your computer? I don't know. <laughs> so she pulls up this program on my computer and lo and behold, there's a place where there's the outline and all you have to do is fill it in. So I did, I did that, we selected pictures, I filled it in, and yesterday one of the staff was up there and I said, take a look at this because I have to email it in. And she looked at it and she said to me, can I dress this up a little bit? <laughs> I said, go right ahead, do whatever you want, I have to go to a meeting. When I came back, she had it all dressed up, it was amazing. When Julia first came and said to me, would you speak at our wellness conference, I thought, what the heck? Why am I speaking in a wellness conference? Because wellness at first to me meant health, okay? The more I thought of it, wellness doesn't only mean your physical health, but it means your mental health and your spirit health. And when I put those three together, I thought, you know what, Seton Center does belong in this mix. And so um, that's why I'm here. And I, hopefully you agree with me by the end of this. 
Um, first of all, this, this is Seton Center. It's one of the pictures from the outside. It was purchased by the Sisters of Charity in 1941, and it opened a high school for girls, and they gave excellent education. I attended Seton Center. <laughs> so I have come full circle. In 1979, the school closed, because the diocese decided they were gonna take the all-girls school with the all-boys school, merge them together, and make Seton LaSalle. And that's what they did. So in 1979, the sisters said, okay, let's just sell the property. So they tried to sell the property. And for years, the buildings were empty. And then the sisters took their, a quote that says, hazard yet forward. We gotta do something. So okay, let's see what kind of programs are needed in the neighborhood. In today's society, there are two things that are needed. Care for the very young and care for the very elderly that cannot be left alone at home, but yet the children are responsible for these parents. So then we decided, okay, we're going to do intergenerational programming in this, in this building. We have clients from six weeks old very young, up to 99 years old. Our oldest one turned 99 about a month ago. The Child Care Center is open Monday through Friday from 7 until 6. Now you might look at these pictures and say, oh, it's a real shame that these children have to, can't be home with their mothers. True. But in today's society, number one, it's much different than when we grew up. Two reasons. Number one, there's many more single parent homes and people are struggling to find care, quality care for their children and work at the same time. Many a day when these young children come into our center the parents are crying. It's very difficult for them to leave these children. And yet we assure them that they are going to be well cared for. And they can call at any time or come in at any time to check on their child. The children, um, hear pretty much at this age tell us what they're going to do. <laughs> they're going to tell us when they're going to sleep, when they're going to eat, and when they need physical care. Um, we'll hear about it. These children are usually, the only time they're in their cribs is when they're sleeping. Otherwise, they're on the floor playing or they're being held, or they're being fed. Um, and research, research shows that the human brain develops faster in the first five years of life than at any other time. Even at this very early age, the teachers are required to develop lesson plans that are age appropriate and follow the Pennsylvania learning standards. Pennsylvania has learning standards that go from birth all the way up, and their lesson plans have to follow this. Even if it means um, we're going to put Cheerios on a, the, the uh, high chair tray. You might walk in and say, well, what's that? Well, this is teaching fine motor. This is teaching how to grasp things, pick them up, put them on. Everything is learning but it has to be hand-on. Play is the work of a child. That's how they learn. This picture here, these are our one and two year olds. The, the staff or the teachers in this department developed a theme that was a carnival theme. And so the uh, lead teacher there, she's dressed up as a clown. Notice no makeup, 
So as soon as she took off those glasses, the children knew who it was. So they weren't afraid of her. Um, and then out in the hall, they set up games for the children to play, and they had prizes for them. It was really a, a great, fun day. Our two-year-olds can count to 10 in Spanish. And once a year, our Korean sisters come in and visit the center. They learned how to say hello and goodbye in Korean. And, and they just, it just comes naturally. Okay. Um, this is a, in the first, they're, they're uh, large Legos. So they're larger, they're not those little ones. So that the children can manipulate them and work with them. Every year, they, the staff plants a pumpkin patch, and they, all the children go out, they put these little pumpkins all over the hillside at the center uh, child care playground. The children go out, and they pick their pumpkin up. But that's not the end of it. They go back into the classroom, and the teachers get larger pumpkins. So they learn more about pumpkins. They cut it open. They get all that book out of the middle. They put their little hands in there and pull it out. What color is the pumpkin? What else can I do with this pumpkin? What's inside this pumpkin? Everything is learning, but it's fun and it's hands-on. Once a year, we have a Dr. Seuss Day. Early language and literacy development begins the first three years of a child's life. So here we have someone that you might say, oh, how'd you get all those children to sit down like that? If an adult opens a book and sits on the floor, they will come. <laughs> they gather around you and they sit there. Now, it's not a forced thing, because if a child doesn't want to be there, they don't have to be there at this age. Just like the little girl in the corner, she wants nothing to do with that, she's going off to do something else, and that's perfectly all right. Um, parents will come in and say, how do you get them all to sit at a table? How do you get them to lay down and take a nap all at the same time? They, they'll do it, they do it. In preschool, we go from age three up to uh, when they start kindergarten. It's a pre-K. Seton Center partners with the Pittsburgh Public Schools in a pre-K cons program. We were selected years ago. Um, they came to me and said, would you be willing to partner with us in this project? And I said, sure, uh, yeah, as long as they're doing the writing and I'm just doing the work, that's fine with me. Um, the lead teachers in this department, each lead teacher in our room, they must be certified in early childhood. So this is not royal babysitting. If you are in a quality child care program, you have educated teachers in that program and they're following the Pennsylvania standards and they're being observed constantly. They're coming in. Lesson plans must follow the Pennsylvania learning uh, standards and be developmentally appropriate. And to prove that, when a teacher writes her lesson plans, she has to write there, what standard are you following with this lesson plan? And yes, at age three, they are introduced to the computer. Um, it's not a lot of time, but they're introduced to it. They know how to turn it on, they know how to turn it off, they can manipulate that mouse. Um, they probably are up to where I am with my computer right now. <laughs> <laughs> um, then in the um, lower picture here, they're doing uh, number recognition using, uh, must have been around Christmas time because they're using jelly beans. Easter. 
just sorry. When the ch children are engaged in baking, and they do baking activities inside the classroom, they're developing language skills, math skills, they're using their listening and fine motor skills during this task, and they're learning to follow directions. Um, and the one, it, uh, Top two, they were doing something that had to do with um, Groundhog Day. That's why they were doing something, I guess they were making pudding and they were putting it in cups and then they were using those little teddy bear crackers as the groundhog. <laughs> Around Christmas time, I went and walked into the three-year-old and they were making gingerbread homes. They were using their little milk cartons and the uh, graham crackers, and they had icing and candy all over the place, and it, they were having a great time. At first, there was one little girl that didn't want to get her hands dirty, but she got into it when she found out that the icing didn't taste bad, <laughs> and neither did some of the candy. Here's number recognition. Um, in this one, they're using those uh, little fish crackers, cheese crackers, uh, to count their, they count them out for number recognition. And then the other one, it's pattern recognition, and that had to be around uh, Valentine's Day because they're using those candy hearts to make patterns. Uh, the teacher would make a pattern, then they had a match for the pattern. Now the important thing for us too is to get parents involved within the center. Parents are invited into the classrooms to engage in activities with the children. At Christmas time, um, there are children from different religions. Those parents come in and we teach about that religion, what the customs are. Uh, we have a lot of parents that will come in and share their customs with the children at Christmas time or any other special occasion during the year. This is a parent who's reading to the children. Um, she came in to read to the children. And usually the children don't know who the parent is, so when the parent walks in and they find out it's their mother or dad, they're really happy. But it doesn't stop there. After a story is read, many of the stories, the children are able to explore discover and act out scenarios of some of the popular children's stories. The one uh, where they have all the shoes in the center, it had to do something with magic shoes or something. The teacher sat down with them after the story. Everyone took off one shoe and she used that to say, okay, which shoes have pink in them? Which shoes are black? How many shoes have this or that? Um, so it was teaching. This one here, it was three little pigs. Uh, I just took one of the pictures from this. But different groups of children made structures. One made it out of little twigs. One made it out of straw. And the other made it out of Legos, which were the bricks. And then they blew on them to see which ones fell and which one stood. And then they talked about why did that happen. Here we have our annual Christmas show. Um, all the children are in the show from age three up through 12 years old. And they get up on the stage and they sing their little songs and the children believe that they're the best thing since sliced bread. And so do their parents and grandparents and aunts and uncles. They get an audience of about 350 people in our auditorium every year. Um, this year, they ask them, what, what do you want to do for the finale? What would you like to do? Well, if anyone has learned, heard of the movie Frozen, <laughs> And the theme song from Frozen, 
That was it. They wanted to sing Frozen. So at the very end, all the children get on the stage, and they're singing this song. And there was one little boy who was mentally challenged. That music started, and this little boy danced across the stage, swinging his arms to the music. And he danced across the stage and back again. There wasn't, from the staff that knew this child, or anyone in the audience that knew this child, there wasn't a dry eye at the house. I mean, it was absolutely tremendous. The children, it's a role. The children have to go outside for a period of time every day. Anytime it's between 25 degrees and 90 degrees, they have to be outside. So they wintertime, they go out, they play in the snow. Um, and then the, every year, the um, preschool, they do one fundraiser, and that's a trike the fun for St. Jude's Hospital. So that whole week before they have the tri trikathon, the teachers talk about some of the children at St. Jude, why they're doing this, and then they spend the week teaching bike safety <clears throat> and what that means. The day of the trikathon, they go outside and the teachers will set up a course and it will have stop signs and it will have one way and it will have yield and the teachers or the children ride their tricycles through the obstacle of the course um, and raise money for St. Jude. They do a tremendous job. The other thing that um, is a requirement is that each classroom has to have something live in it. Well, one classroom had a hamster, Bruce. <laughs> and we came in one weekend and Bruce had passed. So the teachers, there had to be some closure, and they knew they had to explain this to the children that Bruce was gone. So they call up to my office and they said to me, Bruce died. <laughs> okay? They said, well, can we bury Bruce someplace on the premises? I said, sure, you can bury Bruce anywhere you want. So they made a little shoe box, the teachers, and they put a cloth in the shoe box and they placed Bruce in the shoe box and they explained to the children that, that Bruce had passed. So they had a procession out to the burial site. All these four-year-olds are trooping along. Teachers dig a hole, they place the box with Bruce in it in the hole, and one little four-year-old said, we should say a prayer. So the teacher said, all right, Jimmy, you can lead us in prayer. And he went, bless us, O oh Lord. Out of my children. Then we have our school age program. This is in session uh, during the school year, before and after school. The children come to the site, we give them breakfast, then we transport them to the school, and we transport to four area schools in the Brookline area. Um, during uh, summer and during holiday vacation, the school age children are there all day. And then, of course, there's those special days when we wake up and they say, school's open, school's open, school's open. And then at around 8.30, they say, school's closed. Or there's a late start. There's a late start. The children stay at the center. We make sure they get to school when they're supposed to be there. If they want to do homework when they come home from school, they're permitted to do their homework, that's fine. But this after school program is really set up to be fun and relaxing. They've been in school for five, five hours now. 
So they need time to just let go. We have computers not in our school age department. They're allowed to be on a computer at the most for 20 minutes. That's it. After that, it's activity time. Some of them would stay on the computer or those uh, video games and things forever, uh, but it, we don't permit that. Some of the activities they have are the logo tables. They can sit and have conversation. We have books. We have dress-up clothes so they can play dress-up. The little boy, Jimmy, uh, he came to us when he was about three years old. Jimmy could not talk. He could not walk. We were carrying him up and down the steps. We were carrying him to any room he had to go to. His mother called. He had been put out of two other child care centers, said they couldn't handle him. So she called me and said, Sister, um, someone told me to call you. I said, bring Jimmy in. She brought him in and she said, he has about a one-year-old mentality, so if you put him in the one-year-old room, that's fine. No, it's not fine. If I put Jimmy in a one-year-old room, he's going to be modeled one-year behavior. Jimmy will go into the three-year-old room, because that's how old he was, and he will be modeled three-year-old three -year behavior. And he matched up to it. Within a short period of time, Jimmy was coming up the steps with assistance. And the first word they taught him to say was Barbara. So every time they brought him up those steps, you could hear him scream Barbara all over the place. I knew when he was coming. These are some of the other activities they have. The basketball, the basketball thing that's up there, that was given to one of our teacher's children for Christmas from grandparents. A lesson to grandparents. That's too large for a house. <laughs> okay. So the mother said, that's going to the center. And the children love it. They can play cards, they can do art projects, they can play board games. It's their choice. We're lucky enough that since this was a school building, we have a half a gym. I guess because it was a girls' high school, they only got half. <laughs> but we have half of a gym, which is a lifesaver when they can't go outside due to weather. And they play uh, all kinds of games. They'll set up uh, uh, obstacle courses. The teachers will set up obstacle courses. Um, they'll do basketball. They'll do whatever in there. But I have to say, their favorite game is dodgeball. This is our school age playground. We have three playgrounds. This is school age. We have one for preschool that has smaller equipment on it. We have one for the infants and toddlers. Um, this playground, this equipment anyhow, was put in uh, by men who worked at the steel mill on the day that um, they come around and do volunteer work. At, they must have spent a whole week putting in this um, playground for us, which was great. Now in the summertime, uh, we're lucky enough that we are maybe a half a block from the neighborhood playground. So in the summertime, they can get down to the playground and there's a basketball court down there, there's tennis courts down there, there's little sprinklers, and most of all, there's a swimming pool. I swear, Seton Center keeps that city pool open every year. Because every year we take about 50 children down to that swimming pool every day in the summer. We have two lifeguards on staff. 
so that plus the lifeguards that are down there at the pool, we have two of our own that get down with the children. And of course, ratio does not. In our infant toddler department, we keep a, uh, in the infant room, it's four to one ratio. One year old, it goes up to five to one. Two year olds, it goes up to six to one. Preschool, it goes 10 to one. Pre or school age, for older school age, it will go 15 to one. We won't do that. We keep it to, to uh, 12 to one. These are some more games. Um, every child is an artist. We, prov we also provide breakfast in the morning when the children come in. And we provide snack in the afternoon when they come home. The children bring their own lunches if they're there all day. This one, this one is very special to me. Um, the children, the year I celebrated my 50th Jubilee, I don't know how they kept this a secret because they had to be working on this all summer. The children took ceramic towel and they made the mosaic over there that says Seton Center. Um, you have pictures of them doing the project. And then the day after we had the celebration, I was in the office and I get a call that says, Sister, can you come down to room 13? Now when Sister is called to room 13, it usually means trouble's brewing. So I walked on with my uh, school face on, school teacher face on, to walk into the room. I opened the door, all the children were in there and all the teachers. So of course I walk in, they say happy uh, Jubilee, and then there was this huge package on the table, and they said open the package. I opened that package to this day. That brings, that chokes me out. It's absolutely beautiful. It's done in the uh, seat and colors, and we hung it in the front hall right outside the office. Beautiful. Then they did another one of the United States, and that one is ha um, hanging down in the school age department. Our music program, we have a Suzuki music program that is growing. Um, we have music instruction in violin, guitar, and piano. And next year, um, they came to me with their budget and said, we want to start an orchestra. So it's, it, it's really coming to life, and we're excited about that. Then we go to the, the other end of the spectrum. This is a program for the family that needs care for their frail elderly member and that is unable to be left alone during the day. Many of these people are, have dementia, okay? Um, they come into the center. We have two sites, one in Greensburg and one in Pittsburgh. The one in Greensburg is open from eight to four. The Pittsburgh site is open from six in the morning till nine at night, Monday through Friday. About a few, some years ago, the director over there came to me and said, you know what, the only day that these caregivers have to themselves is Saturday. They need time to go out and do their shopping and to do personal things that they have to do for themselves. Can we open on Saturdays? Sure. So on Saturday we're open from 8.30 until 5 o'clock. This young lady, I should the younger one, <laughs> over by the window, turned 99 last month. She's our oldest uh, person there. 
In our adult daycare, we have we provide nursing um, services. We have an RN and an LPN on our staff. They they'll do medical administration, medication administration, health monitoring, um, personal care. We give showers, and we have physical and occupational therapy come in. Uh, through Fox Rehab. And this is Sister, one of your own. She does exercise every day. If you want to see a show, come in and watch Sister Celine do exercise with these people. She puts music on, and it's not that nice, quiet, soft music. She puts popular music on, and she makes them move. Activities. They have music, exercise, compa the companionship games, arts and crafts, um, and they're engaged in activity all day. The director there, they do not sit idly in chairs at any time during the day. If they need to sit down and rest for a while, that's perfectly all right. But a half hour is the most you're going to sit and just sit there. She assigns uh, staff to every table. Each table has a staff member. They are responsible to make sure those people are engaged in some way. Playing games, putting puzzles together, playing cards. Uh, this card table, I don't know, I told them we were going to get raided someday with this. <laughs> they love to play 500 or 21. Get out those little tokens, 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 chips, and they're off and running. At first, this was an all men's table, but I gotta tell you, the women poured it in there, and some of the women are better at this than the men. Uh, we bring the entertainment in. This is Mr. and Mrs. Banjo that come in every year, and they play uh, songs that the seniors know from back when. We also had a bird man come in with different birds and did tricks. And uh, usually when we do things like this, we will take the children over too. Okay, uh, the state says one to six. We say one to four for our ratio. And like I said, there's a staff person in every one. We have special parties you know, for them at Christmas, at Easter, at Halloween, uh, Fourth of July, whatever. They have special parties, and at least once a year, we have a big dinner and um, invite the caregivers to come in and join them for the dinner. Now, what makes Eaton Center special? In today's society, most of the time, we separate the generations. We have housing for seniors. We have communities only seniors can move into. And the children, we put them in a childcare or in organized sports just for children. And what this does is build up walls of separation. The children become afraid of older people, especially if they're in a wheelchair or have a walker or a cane. Most of these children are not, some of them never see their grandparents because of distance or very rarely see grandparents. And the adults their idea sometimes of the younger generation is what they see on TV. And we all know, most of the time, that's not good. At Seed Center, we build bridges. We bring the generations together.
And at first the children, are, or when they first walk in for like first visit, they're, I have to say, they're a little frightened. But the more they go over and the more they interact and get to know these people, pretty soon they're saying, can we go over, especially the school age children. Every year at Halloween, the children come in with their Halloween programs, and one of the things we do is we have a Halloween parade. And the children walk through the senior center, and the seniors are all lined up with their candy, and they hand out the candy to the children. Our music program will go over on occasion and, and, and play uh, for the seniors. And then, especially during the summertime, we can do this because the school age are there. They'll go over and they'll uh, do balloon tossing with the with the uh, young with the adults, or the parachute game, or just go over and dance for them, whatever. This is around Easter time. Uh, they go over and they dye eggs with the seniors to prepare for their annual Easter egg hunt that they have, both the seniors and the children together. And of course, a uh, favorite game is bingo. Um, so the children uh, will go over and help some of the adults that can't watch their own car. They help them with their car. And they'll also go over in the summertime and serve lunch over there. The children will serve the seniors uh, their lunch or do puzzles with them. So after um, much thought and much persuasion from Julia, the Seton Center cares for the whole person by developing minds allowing parents and caregivers to work knowing that their loved one is being cared for in a safe and enriching environment. And we take care of the spirit by building community. And that's it.